So we're going to build some triangles now. So knowing if we're given this problem right here, the tangent of the arc sine of 8 ninths. So remember, 8 ninths is your ratio. It's not your angle measure. It's positive. So you're in quadrant 1. I need to find the tangent. So what this is saying is where does sine have a ratio of 8 to 9? And so the first thing I did was verify that this is a good ratio. So since sine can only max out at 1, this is less than 1. So I'm in a good ratio. I'm in quadrant 1. So I'm going to draw a triangle because I was given opposite over hypotenuse. So my opposite from theta is going to be 8 and my hypotenuse is going to be 9. So when I try and find x, I get x squared plus 64 is 81. So 81 minus 64 is going to be 17. And I'm going to square root both sides, and I find out that this side is the square root of 17. So I have found the angle. I don't know its exact value, but I found the angle that, that results in this ratio for sine. So now that I know that, tell me what the tangent is. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So my tangent is going to be 8 over root 17, which means I'll have 8 root 17 over 17 when you rationalize. Okay, so that work from the inside out, build your triangle first, and then tell me the resultant ratio that you're looking for. So let's do another one. What happens if I've got the cosine of the arc tangent of, ooh, let's just throw some extra parentheses in there, of the arc tangent of u. So remember, the inverse trig function will have a ratio for the argument. So I can actually put u over 1 right there. And since tangent is positive, you'll find out when you're building these triangles that we assume that it's positive unless you're stated otherwise. So in this case, I'm going to get a formula. I am going to get a formula that's going to correspond uh, to what my cosine is because I'm already dealing with variables. So to make life easier, if your variable is contained in a ratio, then we're just going to assume that everything's positive. It's just going to make life easier that way unless you're told otherwise. So I can build this, being that this is positive. Here's my theta. I know that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I find out that my opposite is u and my adjacent is 1. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to find a formula for the hypotenuse. It's not going to be a nice pretty number. You're going to find a formula for the hypotenuse. So I've got x squared plus y squared is my hypotenuse squared. So my x squared is 1 plus u squared, which is my y is going to be h squared. Well, I don't care what h squared is, so I need to take a square root. So I find out that my hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 1 plus u squared. And now I just need to know the cosine of that. So I've done this interior part. Now tell me what the cosine of that angle is. You don't know what the value of the angle is, but you do know that you, you can complete the ratio. So the cosine of this angle is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So your cosine is going to be 1 over 1 plus u squared under a radical. Do not rationalize. Okay, It's going to be a mess if you rationalize. It's actually fairly easy, but we like it in this format. And you're going to know why when you get to count 2. Okay, Because we end up not being able to do some calculus stuff in algebra. So we push it into trig world and then do the, do the calculus there and then pull it back out. So for the next one, we're going to do, um, which one did we just do? Hang on. We just did cotangent of, or cosine of arc tangent. So now we're going to do the cotangent of, of arc sine. So the cotangent of the arc sine of u. So working from the inside out, I know that this is a ratio. So I'm going to force it to be a ratio of u over 1. I know that I'm going to write my answer in terms of u. Okay. So what is sine the same thing as? Sine is opposite 
over hypotenuse. So my opposite is u, my hypotenuse is 1. So now I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem to find out what this side is. So that's x. So x squared plus u squared is going to be 1 squared. And I'm trying to get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract u squared from both sides. And then I'm going to take a square root. So I get x equals the square root of 1 minus u squared. So now everything is in terms of u. And I want the cotangent of that. So the cotangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. No, it is not. That is the tangent. The cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite. So my adjacent is 1 minus u squared over my opposite is u. So that's how we're going to write that. So let's try one more. I've got the tangent of the inverse cotangent or arc cotangent of u. Okay. So what I have is remember that this is a ratio. So what I have is a triangle and I've got adjacent over opposite. So my adjacent is going to be u. My opposite is going to be 1. And then I'll have a u squared plus 1 is hypotenuse squared. Based on Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is h squared. So take a square root. So we've got u squared plus 1. So I've done this part. Now tell me what the tangent of that is. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is 1 over adjacent is u. So I've got 1 over u. So again, this is one of those ones that if you notice that you were dealing with reciprocals to start, you could have just flipped this. So you would have had the tangent of the arc tangent of not just u over 1, but of 1 over u. And then these two things undo each other. So you found the tangent. So since you're looking for tangent, ta change that into terms of tangent. Don't change this to a cotangent. Okay, so either way you get your answer is 1 over u. All right, so the last one that we're going to do, or the last couple that we're going to do, um, are going to be composition functions. And they gave you all the restrictions to start off with, but we're going to say, actually, let's pull this up on the screen. Hang on, let me do some stuff. What does that say? Um, actually, I can't do that. All right, because I started recording just with my camera, so I can't flip. All right, so what I have is f of x is sine x. Okay, g of x is going to be cosine x. And what they've done is they've, go, they've gone ahead and given us our restrictions. So sine x is going to be restricted from a negative pi over 2 to a pi over 2. Cosine is going to be restricted between 0 and pi. And then they say that h of x is going to be the tangent of x. And it's also going to be restricted between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so they've given us all this mess. Now what the problem asks for is what is f of the inverse of g at 24 twenty fifths. Okay, so f of the inverse of g at 24 twenty fifths. So I'm going to go ahead and replace. What is f? f is sine. So I'm going to say the sine of, and then instead of g, I'm going to do the inverse of g. So I'm going to do the arc cosine of g, because that's the inverse, at 24 twenty fifths. Okay, so now what do we have? We've got a ratio, so arc cosine lives in quadrants 1 and 2, top half of the unit circle. It's positive, so we must be in quadrant 1. This is not a benchmark ratio, and this is not a benchmark angle, which means you will not be able to get a solid answer. But I do have the ratio of adjacent to hypotenuse. So I'm going to build my triangle 
with adjacent being 24, ha, almost went in the wrong spot, 25. Okay, so when I do Pythagorean theorem, I'll get 625 minus 576 is 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. So now I know the angle that this ratio occurs at. I don't know the actual numerical measure of the angle, but I do know the ratio. And so can I figure out what sine is? I can. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so why didn't we use H? Because that beginning stuff is actually just going to be a static problem, and then they're just going to give you different iterations of it. So this may be a G, this may be an H, whatever. So let's do one more just to play. If I have H of F of 1, sorry, H of the inverse of F is going to be, why can't I write, negative 6 sevenths. Okay. So that's the wrong, print. look at that big fat parenthesis right there. Okay, so I have the inverse of F. Well, what is H? H is tangent, and they've already restricted my domain. So I've got the tangent of, what is F? F is arc sine. So I want the inverse of F, so I want arc sine of negative six sevenths. So it's not a benchmark ratio. Okay, so what can I do? I can work backwards and build a triangle because I was given a ratio. So I know that this is opposite over hypotenuse. So I can build my triangle. Okay, and I actually built it upside down because it's negative. Where's arc sine allowed to live? Arc sine lives in quadrants four or one, and I know that this is a negative ratio. So I must be in quadrant four. So again, how do I draw this? I draw a diagonal into the quadrant I want to be in, and that's going to be the hypotenuse of the radius, and then I go over and down to meet this to meet this point down here. So I know that my hypotenuse can never be negative, so my opposite must be negative 6, and my hypotenuse must be positive 7. So using Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to get 49 minus 36 is going to be 13 but I need to square root him, so I need the square root of 13, okay? So now that I know the angle that this ratio produces, um, or the uh, production, I know how to make this ratio because of this angle, so now I can just find the tangent of that angle. So the tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, so remember opposite is going to be negative 6 over root 13. We need to rationalize so that's going to be a negative 6 root 13 over 13. So that is going to be the tangent. Okay, now last couple things. You're going to do, um, on number 19, you're going to talk about grains falling out of the sky and just recognize that the angle measure you find, it's a similar triangle. So use the same angle measure throughout, okay? Use the same angle measure throughout. And then, um, actually, let's just do it real quick. All right, so it says that I have granular materials. When they fall through the sky, they end up making a cone shape or a conical shape. Okay, so you've got this part over here that you can't see, and then you get this lovely part here. Okay, and that makes a nice pretty little triangle right here. So there is um, a 90 degree angle right here. And then I want to find out the angle of repose, okay? I want to find out the angle of repose, which is going to be this little part right here. So again, I'm dropping grains through a ceiling or something like that, and it makes this conical shape. The base of it is a circle, and it's like an ice cream cone that's upside down, okay? So I know that this is R for my radius, and I know that this is H for height. So it tells me that angle of repose, meaning how steep is this thing, okay? Is it mostly flat where it's going to be, you know, a height like this and it's going to be mostly flat or is it going to be a pretty wide angle of repose? So theta can be found by taking the arc cotangent of R over H. The arc cotangent of R over H. Now let's remember... I don't like arc cotangent because I don't have a button like that on my calculator. But what I can do is state 
um, I can I can use that fact in my uh, arsenal in just a second. So when a certain granular material material is stored in a pile 18 feet high, so this is going to be my triangle that I'm just pulling out of here. So this is 18 feet high. So I just pulled this triangle out so it's easier to see. And the uh, diameter of the base is 55. So the whole way across is 55, which means this must be 27.5, which is half of 55. Okay. So I want to know what is the angle of my repose. Well, I don't know what arc cotangent is on my calculator, but I do know it if I change it into tangent. So I'm going to take the, the arc tangent of h over r. So find this thing's reciprocal. Just remember, you can only do this if you're dealing with inverse trig functions, and this is a ratio. So I can flip this to its recipro reciprocal, which means i got to flip this to its reciprocal. So I find out that theta is the arc tangent of the height, which is 18, over the radius, which is 27.5. So when I put that in my calculator, what I have is the arc tangent. Make sure you're in degrees, which I am. So second tangent is going to give you the arc tangent. Okay, and let me make it a little bit dimmer so you can see better. Okay, so I've got the arc tangent of 18 over 27.5. 18 over 27.5, and I find out that that angle of repose is 33.21 degrees. So this angle right here is 33.21 degrees. So that's going to be the first question. The second question is going to be, what is the base diameter of a pile that is 16 feet high. So this is what I mean when I'm talking about these are similar triangles. In other words, the ratios will stay intact, but your angle measure is going to be uh, the same. Your angle measure will be the same. So I'm going to draw a new triangle. So this was 33.21. And I'm just going to change the dimensions a little bit. So this is my theta, which I know is 33.21. And I've changed the height to be 16 feet. So this is now 16 feet, and what I'm looking for is the, the diameter of the base. So if I find the radius of the base, remember, from here to here, double it, and you'll know what the diameter is. So what do I know? I know that I am looking for opposite over adjacent. If I can find adjacent, things are going to be fabulous. So what I'm going to do is take this angle measure that I know and say that the tangent of 3321 needs to be opposite over adjacent, which is x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by tangent. So what you're actually doing is you're finding the cotangent because your tangent is in the denominator. Okay, so I find out that x equals the reciprocal of 1 over tangent would be cotangent times 16. So in my calculator, I've got 16 divided by the tangent of 33.21. And that gives me a radius of 2444. My radius is 2444. So when I double that to find the diameter, I find out it's 4888. So that's the entire diameter of my pile of granules, okay? What's the height of a pile that has a base diameter of 138? So now we're going to change it again. I want to know what the height is. My angle measure is going to stay the same at 3321. You cannot see. Okay. It's going to stay the same at 3321. I know that my diameter is 138. So 138 divided by 2 will tell me what the radius is, which is 69. So this side is 69, and now I want to know what this side is, because I want to know what the height is. So what ratio are we dealing with? Here's my angle measure. I'm, I'm dealing with tangent, because it's opposite over adjacent. Okay, opposite over adjacent. So I can say that the cotangent... 
sorry, tangent, tangent of 33, 21 equals y opposite over adjacent, which is 69. And now multiply both sides by 69, and I'll know what the height is. So 69 times the tangent of 3321 gives me 45.17. You can see. 45.17. So this height is 45.17. Now, I realize that we're way over. But let me show you this last one because it can look a little bit confusing. It talks about a projectile. Okay, a projectile fired into the first quadrant from the origin of a coordinate system will pass through the point x, y at time t. Okay, x, y at time t. According to the relationship, the cotangent of theta is 2x over 2y plus g times t squared. So theta is the angle of elevation of the launcher. Um, g is the acceleration due to gravity. So g is going to be 32.2 feet per second squared. 32 feet per second per second. And all, an artilleryman is firing at an enemy bunker located 26, 25 feet up the side of a hill. So that's going to be your Y. So my Y is going to be 26, 25. Okay. That hill is 63, 50 feet away. So I'm measuring distance and it's far away from me. And that's 63, 50. He fires around, and exactly 2.78 seconds later, he scores a direct hit. So my time is going to be 2.78 seconds. Now, you don't have a cotangent button, but you do have a tangent button. So I can, since the cotangent of an angle is a ratio, I can flip this whole thing into tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of 2y plus gt squared over 2x of theta. Forgot my theta. All right, so the tangent of theta is going to be 2 times y, so 2625, and then plus g, which we were told is 32.2, times t squared, which is 2.78 squared, all over 2x, so 2 times 63.50. Okay, well, that doesn't help much because that's just going to tell me I need to know what theta is. So if I take the arc tangent of both sides, okay, then theta is going to equal the arc tangent. Let me write it neater the arc tangent of 2 times 26.5. So we're going to have to be very careful. We're going to have to say what our numerator is. So 2 times 26.25 plus 32.2 times 2.78 squared. And then we need to close that numerator. So make sure you have a parenthesis at the end. All over, open a parenthesis, and we'll do 2 times 6350, close that parenthesis, and then close the argument on your trig function. So what I have is the arc tangent of, okay, it already opens up a parenthesis. Tell me what the numerator is. The numerator is 2 times 2625 plus 32.2 times 2.78 squared. Okay, so it's going to do order of operations. It's going to do exponent first, then it's going to do the multiplication, then it's going to add. So close your numerator divided by what's your denominator? 2 times 6350. Close that denominator. Now close the argument on your trig function and hit enter. And we find out that the angle of elevation is 23.41. So theta is 23.41 degrees. Okay? So if I want to find out, it says the ang if the angle of elevation is also given by secant theta, 
is V sub O times T over X. So secant theta is V sub O times T over X, where V sub O is the muzzle velocity of the weapon. So I'm looking at V sub O. Find the muzzle velocity of the artillery piece he used. Okay, so I'm going to flip this whole thing because I don't care about secant. My calculator doesn't recognize secant offhand, so I'm going to change this into cosine. So I've got the cosine of theta equals x over v sub o t. Okay, so what's my cosine? My cosine theta is, what was x? Okay, x is going to be, um, what is x? 6350. Okay, so 6350 over V sub O is what I'm looking for. Okay, so V sub O is what I'm looking for. And then T is going to be 2.78, which means it appears as though I have too much or too many variables. But you know what theta is. Okay, so the cosine of theta, let me rewrite this over here. The cosine of theta my theta was 23.41 equals x. So I need to know what x was. x was 63.50. Is that right? Hang on. x is 63.50 over v sub o. That's a little o. It's actually a zero. But it's v sub o times t. What was our T? 2.78. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find out what this number is first. Remember that this is just over 1. And I'm going to cross multiply. Okay, so if I cross multiply, I'm going to get V sub O, which is what I'm looking for, times 2.78 times the cosine of 2341 equals 6350. And now I can divide both sides by 2.78 cosine of 2341. 2.78 cosine of 2341. And that's going to leave me with V sub O. So here's what we're going to do in our calculator. We're going to be very, very, very careful. And we're going to notice that there's a lot of crap going on. So my denominator needs to be in parentheses. So I've got 6350 divided by parentheses 2.78 times the cosine of 2341. Close that cosine and now close your denominator. And now your muzzle, muzzle what? Muzzle velocity is 2489.06 feet per second. So 24. 89.06 feet per second. Okay, and that, my friends, was a very long video, and it is the end of, of uh, 8.2.